Hi, I'm Dylan Gargan. I recently passed the American College of Sports Medicine Health and Fitness Specialist exam. The next day it turned into the Certified Exercise Physiologist exam, so whatever you're looking up, hopefully it matches one of those. Uh, one way that I prepared for the exam was I was looking for sources of possibly uh, someone who had a good personal experience with the exam who could hopefully give me some insight towards the exam. And what I found was I didn't find a good one. So my intention with this is I want to make a YouTube channel pretty much based on the exam. I want to go into the detail of what kind of questions I was asked during the exam. Obviously it's not going to be the same for everyone, but I would say it probably does follow a somewhat strict format of what kind of questions, maybe with just a little bit of a mix-up of numbers or types of questions on the particular topic. As a quick disclaimer, uh, I'm going to repeat that this is for the ACSM HFS, American College of Sports Medicine Health and Fitness Specialist exam, or a Certified Exercise Physiologist. So. Although I might be able to answer some questions about certified personal trainer and uh, I wouldn't be a very good source for CES, I think that's what it's called, I don't recall. But so as a disclaimer, my intentions with this is purely the ACSM HFS or Certified Exercise Physiologist. I should probably start saying one of them instead of repeating both. Going into the format of the test. It was 150 questions, all of which were multiple choice. So if anyone is worrying about uh, maybe having to type in a number for a metabolic equation or something like that, that's not the case. It, it is purely multiple choice. Chances are, if you're watching this, you're probably an exercise science major because I believe that's a requirement for sitting for the exam. But chances are, if you're like me and an exercise science major, some of the sections are a little bit outside of the major in terms of being legal stuff, professional stuff, things of this nature. My biggest suggestion I can give to you would be know what you know as good as you can, as well as you can, and just do your best on the rest of the stuff. So rather than looking at the guidelines the ACSM gives and then trying to memorize the Civil Rights Act of 1964 for equality to help you answer one or two questions. Probably one, probably none, but uh, just be ready to answer the questions that you know and that you've been taught. I sort of went into the exam not knowing much about management I read over a couple pages of what decibels were suitable for an aerobic class or something. Little stuff like that, if, if you could find good information on that, it would be worth looking at, but I wouldn't spend an incredible amount of time. I also find it might be important to note that you also only have to get a 70%. Um, obviously, your certification isn't going to say your grade on it. I don't know if maybe you're taking it and your grade is going to reflect something to do with class, but chances are most people, they just pass or fail. So I'm going to put a link below of the three books that I did use, and to be perfectly honest, one of which I used, and it was a decent representation of questions that they will ask, but it also steered me in a little bit of a wrong direction, which I'll go into. The other book was a good book for looking at pure guidelines. And the last book that I used about facility, I basically skimmed a couple pages and realized there's way too much information that it wouldn't be worth my time to try to memorize it. So coming back to what I said about you should go into the exam knowing what you've learned as well as you can, uh, I wrote down a couple things that were asked multiple times on the exam that you should feel really good about by the time you go into the exam. 
The first thing that you should feel really good about going into the exam would be risk stratifications for both CAD, which is cardiovascular disease, or uh, metabolic syndrome. Second, you should feel really good about using metabolic equations. There's a lot of examples. If you type in on Google, ACSM metabolic equations, uh, you won't have to memorize the equations, which is great, but you will have to know which numbers to put into them. Third, you should feel really good about doing VO2 into METs and ultimately doing uh, KCALs into VO2. Fourth, you should look into a lot about stroke volume, heart rate, cardiac output, and look a lot into how it's affected by things like age, gender, uh, maybe a specific disease, something like that. And fifth would be a general knowledge of working with special populations, like maybe diabetics, obese, hypertensive, dyslipidemic, children, the elderly, things of that nature. Lastly, I do plan to make more videos about the topics that I just went over, and I encourage anyone with any questions to ask me. If I feel that it's important enough, I might even make its own video. Otherwise, I probably could just respond back in the comment section. So I encourage you to like, comment, subscribe, and see what I have in the future. Good luck!